Thank you, thank you. Isn't it a fitting special song to do, to seek to do God's will in, in light of the theme for today, the, the plans God has for us. Um, that song is so fitting. We remember the words of Jesus. You know, he says, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Thank you, Denze, for that beautiful song. I did not know you were a big time singer. Oh God, oh Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this blessed opportunity we have to come in your presence, oh God, to hear your words, to have fellowship one with the other, oh God, to break bread. We thank you for this opportunity the ladies had today to manage, oh God, and direct the, the services and I thank you in a special way for this invite and I pray, O oh God, that the words that I might speak will be the words, O oh God, that you have placed on my heart. And I pray, pray O oh God, that these words will be glad to receive by the hearers and that they'll have the effects, O oh God, you intended. We just give you thanks and we bless your name. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. You know, the, the theme, the plans God has for us, and so I've just added if you want to experience victory, then start praying. And, you know, James chapter 5. And by the way, James is one of those um, people in the New Testament that kind of speak it like he saw it. Um, I regard James as the practical preacher. And the prayer offered in faith, he said, will make a sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Um, that's kind of suggesting to me just right off that there is power in prayer. There is power in prayer. And so today, because the ladies are in charge, I cannot help but think about the influence of my own mother on this message that I'm sharing today. She was a prayer warrior. I'm here to testify that prayer not only works, but it also changes things. My mother, I would get home late at night and she'd be up praying. And I'd say something and she'd say, I had to pray because you were not home yet. My mother believed in prayer. And she always reminded me that she was praying for me. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. As we kind of dive into this message today, I want us to think of four purposes for prayer. Four purposes that I've identified. There are many more, I'm sure, but I identified these and I, I want us to reflect on them. There is the prayer of adoration, an act of religion offered to God in acknowledgement of his supreme perfection, of his dominion, and of our dependence on him. In a looser sense, it is the reverence that we give to God. Our first and foremost duty is to acknowledge God's supreme dominion over us as our creator and father, our absolute dependence on him as his creatures and his children. And we also ought to acknowledge God's supreme excellence. The second purpose for prayer is thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 through 18 says, Be joyful always, 
pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Thanksgiving is about giving thanks in all circumstances and at all times, in season and out of season. It doesn't matter if you're feeling good. It doesn't matter if you're down. It doesn't matter if you're up. You give thanks. When things are going well, when we're in pain in the morning hour, at noon, and right again in the evening. There is the prayer of repentance, a call to persons to make a radical turn from one way of life to another. It is the turnaround. The, the repentance metanoia was called for throughout the Bible. It is a summons to a personal, absolute, and ultimate unconditional surrender to God as sovereign. When the songwriter penned, I surrender all to, all to Jesus, I freely give. That's it. It is about total surrender to God. And at verse 15 and 16 of the text reminds us, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Verse 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And pray for each other so you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Surrendering all to Jesus is the fulcrum of our experience. And so the fourth purpose for prayer is petition. And a petition, just as it is in the political arena, is a request to a sovereign to take some action. Any request made of God is thus a petition. As such, all petitions presented to God are delivered as prayer. But bear in mind, not all prayers are petitions. Some prayers are for glorification, for confession, for thanksgiving. These aren't petitions. But when we enter into the presence of God with our, our questions, our requests for mercy, our peace, our forgiveness, we are petitioning our sovereign God. You know, my Bible informed me that my God has said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. That's 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. So why, as Christians, should we pray? You know, we pray to build our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. We are first called to prayer because it is a key vehicle to building our love relationship with Jesus Christ. The text, James chapter 5 and verse 15 says, And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. You know, we know that we are only able to say with the hymn writer Horatio Spafford, it is well with my soul when we are truly at peace in our communication with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I ask the question, how is your prayer life? Ladies, it's your Sunday. How is your prayer life? Men, you are the supporters. You are the sons, the husbands, the brothers, the cousins. How is your prayer life? You know, Stafford penned these assuring words. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, with my soul. And so the chorus says, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And the second stanza says, though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control 
that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. We can join with Spafford to say it is well with our souls because Jesus gives us that assurance. And we know it is part of the plan that God has for us. And we want the assured victory. And therefore, we pray. Yes, saints of God, we pray. So, remember this point about our religion. Christianity is not primarily about rules, but rather it is about relationship, both vertical and horizontal. Communication is a key part of this relationship. And when we pray, we're having sweet communion, communication with him. Let me say that again. When we pray, we're having sweet communication. Yes, sweet communion with him communication a critical part of our relationship both vertical and horizontal you know as christians we pray because we love him just as a man and a woman in love desire to be together and to communicate so we if we love god will desire to be with him and to fellowship with him in proportion to our love for him. Let me put it to you this way. Lots of love, lots of fellowship. Not much love, not much fellowship. Parenthetically, I'm talking about prayer. Because when we have sweet communion, when we communicate with God, we do so through prayer. You know, we pray because we depend on God. He is our source. He is our life. Colossians chapter 3 and verse, says, and verse 4 says, Through prayer we receive the comfort, the strength, and all the other resources we need in life, both naturally and spiritually. Prayer in our relationship with God is as necessary to the spiritual life as air is to the natural life. We pray because prayer allows us to resist temptation. Let me say that again. We pray because prayer allows us to resist temptation. You know, Jesus warned his disciples to, and I quote here, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Living a life without prayer can leave us weak and exposed, given an opportunity for the enemy to gain ground and potentially lure us into sin. Christian saints, we pray because prayer is necessary for people to invite God to, in, to act in salvation. You know, God gave the earth to Adam and his descendants. So we must invite God to work here. If no one invites him to work on earth, then Satan the God of this age, as the scripture describe him, because of humanity's universal rebellion, as we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, will dominate human affairs, and eventually the judgment of God will come. By inviting God to intercede often and specifically, multitudes can be saved who would otherwise be lost. We should continue to pray with specific people places and things in mind remember what the scripture says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective verse 17 of the text says elijah was a human being even as we are he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years if you want the victory then start praying. If you want the victory, start praying. You know, we pray to God because God has commanded us to pray. In Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, Paul writes, Continue earnestly in prayer, 
being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Jesus also encourages followers to pray. And I'm quoting here, he, then he, Jesus spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That's Luke chapter 18 and verse one. The need to pray is as great as the authority of God who commands us, pray without stopping, pray without ceasing. Prayer is so vital to all that God wants to do on this earth. And it is so essential to us that he commands us to do it at all times. We should even deny ourselves sleep and food at times in order to pray more and with greater power. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16 and Luke chapter 6 and verse 12 and Luke chapter 21 and verse 36 and Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2 and 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 21. All verses charging us, encouraging us to pray or as John Christosom wrote, prayer helps us determine God's will. Not my will, but thy will be done. Thanks for that song. It is so fitting. Prayer helps us to determine God's will. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8 says, I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer without anger and disputing. Prayer accomplishes God's work. When we are in trouble, or having doubt, the word of the psalmist comes to mind. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Let me read 2 Kings chapter 20 and verse 5 through 7. Because... I want us to see how God's people, when they pray, things can change. The verse says, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, that this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David, says. And listen to this, Keely Christians. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I will surely heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to, the, up to the house of the Lord. And verse 6 says, I will add 15 years to your life. And I will deliver you and this city from the hands of the king of Assyria. I will defend the city for my sake and for the sake of my servant, my servant David. And verse 7 says, Then Isaiah said, Prepare a poultice of figs. So they brought it and applied it to the boil, and Hezekiah recovered. Why am I saying this? Why am I reading 2 Kings? Because prayer is about deliverance. You know, the man of God, he had worked hard. He had done good. But his time had come. And the scripture says that he prayed and that God heard his prayer and saw his tears and added years to his life. You know, pray for deliverance from COVID, but then go take the vaccine. The prayer was made. God heard and delivered, but man still had a part to play. They prepared a poultice of fig and put it on the boil. And the scripture says, and Hezekiah recovered. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yes, saints, we serve a God who hears our prayers and can change the course of history, can add years to our life, and can spare us from COVID. I encourage us to pray, and then to do our part. You know, as Christians, why should we pray? We pray because prayer 
is a weapon of spiritual warfare. In Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10, the scripture says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For you struggle, your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full arm of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. And look what verse 18 says. And pray in the spirit on all occasion with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Paul then make the request in verse 19. And by the way, it's the same request I'm making of you. Pray for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in chains. Paul says, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And so I pray that you, as you pray for me, will help me to declare God's words without fear or favor. I want to get back to Hezekiah for a minute. And, you know, I wish, by the way, um, let me break some protocol here. I wish somebody would just unmute and say amen. If you believe that men always should pray everywhere all the time. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes, yes, yes. Okay, mute yourself again. Let's move on. Amen. <laughs> God be the glory. You know, um, Hezekiah was a man of God. He was a king. He stamped out idol worship and restored Yahweh to his rightful place as the God of Judah. As a military leader, he fend off the superior forces of the Assyrians. As a man of God, Hezekiah obeyed the Lord in everything that he did. He listened to the counsel of Isaiah. His wisdom told him that God's way was best. By the way, Hezekiah also had weaknesses. You know, his lap into pride by showing Judah's treasure to the Babylonian envoys. By trying to impress them, he gave away important state secret. But in the end, Hezekiah chose God's way instead of what was popular. That was the immorality of his culture. So God prospered Hezekiah. And of course, when he became sick and was destined to die, God heard his prayer. And we read before where Hezekiah prayed God heard and God did the delivery. In many ways, prayers is the most compelling, if only because it is not linked to any sort of earthly result. This is what it is. Prayer itself is inherently valuable to God. Why do I say that? Two wonderful demonstrations of this are found in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 and Revelations chapter 5 and verse 8. In the first passage, the writer informs us of the occupation and the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ since his ascension. This is what the verse says. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. Think of it this way. Christ, our Lord, he always lives to make intercession and this is how sd garden amazed by the idea puts it in a way of summing up the life of christ 30 years of living 30 years of serving one tremendous act of dying and 2000 years of prayer 2000 years of prayer what an emphasis on prayer prayer then is so important to the lord that it has been perhaps the chief activity of Christ since he bodily left our planet. God obviously values prayer in a way we usually 
do not. Christians, if you want to succeed, start praying. And by the way, I like to remind Christians not to do this. This has happened to me so many times. Um, this is not anecdote anymore. This is data. This is facts. Do not try to pray just when you are about to fall asleep because you will fall asleep and not remember ending your prayer. Pray when you're wide awake. Pray in the morning when you get up. Pray at noonday hour when you have to be alert. And pray in the evening. And you know what? Pray at night. But do not wait until you're falling asleep to pray. Do not put off praying and say, I'll do it when I go in the bed. Pray all the time because prayer is important. Christ has been praying now making petition on our behalf for the last 2,000 years. It must be important to God. And Revelation 5 and 8 and verses 8 and 9 reminds us, And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding, holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And verse 9 says, And they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open it, to open its seal, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God's person from every tribe and language and people and nation. If Jesus prayed so much to God, and by the way, God has always heard and delivered him because he, God, is worthy of our praise, then we too should start thinking of our responsibility and our obligation to say to our God, Thou art worthy. We must praise our God at every opportunity. Uh, let me say to you this way, Christians, the whole duty of man is to fear, that means to reverence God and to keep his commandment. So if God says we are to pray, if Jesus exemplified prayer, so why are we not praying more? Pray without stopping, please, Christians. Pray without stopping. You know, prayer makes us more like Jesus. If we look at the life of Jesus, we see that he prayed. He prayed with others, as we find in Luke chapter 9 and verse 28. Now it came to pass, about eight days after these sayings, that he took Peter, John, and James, and went up to the mountain to do what? To pray. He prayed for others. So not only did he pray with others, he prayed for others. In Matthew chapter 19, 13, and 14, Then little children were brought to him, that he might put his hand on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Verse 14 said, But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus prayed on his own. Luke 5 and 16 says, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Luke 6 and 12 says, Now it came to pass in those days, that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Jesus, God in the flesh, the Son of God, the man who knew no sin, thought it necessary to pray all night. And some of us complain that the prayer meeting going on too long. When am I going to stop praying? I hold him pray so long. I want to make sure he can pray so Christians, we should not be afraid to pray. It is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Prayer was a fundamental part of how Jesus approached each day and every decision, retreating faithfully to spend time with his Father. In concluding, I want to share a few quotes about praying, and then I want to share my own thoughts about praying. Max Lucado says, and I quote, our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, 
But since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. The power of prayer is in the one who hears it, not in the one who says it. So, brothers and sisters, don't pay too much attention to loudmouths like me. But it's the simple, open heart expression of our thanksgiving, of our praise, of our petition, of our asking for forgiveness that we take to God. It's not what so much we are saying, but it, what, it is what he is doing. The power of prayer is in the hearer, God. So, and by the way, for those who say that they're not hearing what she's saying when, when she's praying, it's none of your business. She's talking to God. She can pray silently and God will hear and answer because the Bible is filled with example of God hearing and delivering. Billy Graham opines, amen. And by the way, please, you know, like we get into the end of this, so feel free. You like you're not upsetting the apple cart if you if you hear the word, if you feel it, unmute and to praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen, and then quickly mute again. Billy Graham opined that true prayer is a way of life, not just for use in, in case of emergency. Oh God, like look what no me care broke down. Oh God, no, you know, when if we make it a habit, Billy Graham says, and when the need arise, you'll be in practice. Yeah, um, some people you can't call on them sudden, suddenly to pray. It's why you call on me sudden, man, suddenly, man. Well, if you're a Christian, you should be able to pray in season or out of season. They should be able to call on you on your sleep, tap you on your shoulder and to pray, and you get up calling on the name of Jesus. Elizabeth Elliot puts it this way. Prayer lays hold of God's plan and becomes the link between his will and its accomplishment on earth. Amazing things happen and we are given the privilege of being the channels of the Holy Spirit's prayer. And this is what Bishop T.D. Jake says, referring to his mother. She, my mother, became a warrior far superior to any epic hero. She became a giant on her knees. With a sword in one hand, she battled the enemies of death and disease and with her other hand stretched forth, she kept beseeching God's help and his mercy. Christians, men and women everywhere ought to pray. So my final thought, uh, my own on prayer, I'm going to say it um, in a kind of forceful way because I believe it. If you love God, pray. If you're longing for him, pray. If you're excited about your relationship with him, pray. And for Christ's sake, if you need him right now, just pray and he will hear from heaven and pour out a Amen. blessing. Amen. He will hear from heaven and pour out a blessing. Yes, same thank you. Thank you. Saints of God. Christians, friends, let's remember that praying is a part of God's plan for us. If you want to experience victory, then start praying because the prayer of the righteous will prevail. I thank my God in a very special way for all those prayers of faith. My mother prayed not just for me, but for her eight children. Thank you, God, for giving me, blessing me with a prayer warrior. She is my earthly example. God specially planned for us to pray. And we know that prayer works and that prayer changes things. So let's start Amen. praying Indeed. because it is a part of the plan that God has for us. Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. Amen. 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 Amen.